Um, I don't think the books generally lead to a lot of uh, work directly. I don't think anybody reads it and says, I'm going to call this guy and hire him. <clears throat> but when they get interested in me for other reasons, which could be speaking, it could be my blog, it could be my podcast, um, it could be a referral from somebody else, a, a former client or somebody else I've worked with. Um, and I've even had clients come to me just because they were searching and found me. Uh, online. Uh, yeah, I think the books, though, and the resume lend credibility um, and may help to push some people over the edge and say, yeah, this is the guy to work with. So I don't, I don't think anybody reads the book and says, I'm going to hire him. I don't think people read books because they need a consultant. Uh, I don't think people go to, I think maybe some people go to conferences because they need some help, uh, but usually when I get hired by somebody who heard me speak, they heard me speak a year or two ago. Now they need the help and they remember. Yeah, I actually wrote an article on my top trends uh, that I see. If you hang on a second, I can pull that up and tell you exactly what I said. So, you know, uh, I talked about continued um, importance of mobile. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I don't think anybody is surprised that, that mobile is becoming more and more important. I think communicators, though, haven't really figured out that there are new opportunities and things they need to be doing pretty dramatically different in order to accommodate mobile. Most of the people I talk to are still you know, developing apps to replace other delivery mechanisms, but it's the same content. Uh, or they're trying to shrink websites down, implement responsive design, or take some other approach to make things look right, but they're, they're not thinking about how people use mobile um, and, and coming up with communications practices and processes that accommodate that. Um, so I, I, yeah, that's one thing. Um, I'm on board with pretty much everybody else who did a predictions uh, column in late 2014 in that the free ride is over uh, with social media, that uh, you're going to need to uh, start buying ads to uh, supplement or, or amplify your organic reach. Um, you know, social payments uh, and, and social e-commerce, I think, are going to be big. Uh, the rise of uh, vertical networks, um, you know, over 50% of all doctors in the U.S. are on Doximity, which is sort of linked in just for doctors. Um, and there are, you know, there's GitHub for programmers, there's Rally Point for military, you know, I mean, yeah, on and on. So uh, I think you're going to see these, these networks continue to emerge and succeed because they meet specific needs of people in a profession that they can't have met on LinkedIn or, you know, Twitter. Uh, content marketing uh, will continue to explode. Uh, and I think we're going to get better at it. Uh, I think we're going to be using more programmatic uh, and, and, you know, automation, um, but we're going to figure out how to overcome the volume of content that is available to consumers in order to get our messages through, whether that's marketing an audience of one or getting really good at, um, you know, six-second videos, whatever it may be. Um, so there's that, um, wearables, uh, I mean, I'm wearing a, a Moto 360 smartwatch right now. Um, I've had it for, uh, oh, six, seven weeks. Um, I can't say that it's indispensable. Uh, I could always go back to digging my phone out of my pocket. Um, but it sure is useful. You know, and I think uh, we're going to see more not just wearables and you know smartwatches and and fitness bands and things like that, but uh, the whole Internet of Things is going to really. I mean, you're seeing that at CES right now too. But I, I think this whole notion of uh, devices connected to other devices uh, over the net um, is going to get bigger and bigger. I mean, you know, the day is coming when your refrigerator will notify you that you don't have enough beer for the Super Bowl party you have scheduled on the on your Google Calendar. Uh, it'll know. Um, so wearables and the Internet of Things. And, you know, with the Internet of Things, I was just having this conversation with a client yesterday. 
uh, you know, communicators say, well, if a device is connected to a device, there's not a role there for PR people or organizational communications people. But if my device is going to send me a message, somebody has to write that message. Right? And who's going to do that? Is it going to be the developers who are creating the tools? You know, do they know the best way to do that? Um, you know, is it possible to write 20 different messages that all say the same thing so that I don't have to see the same thing every time? Um, you know, I, I think there's a role there, just like I think you know, I've been talking to people lately about microcopy, and I think there's a role for uh, communicators and, you know, what's in the button that you click on the web screen. Submit, does it really need to say that? <laughs> think, you know, I'm ready or let's go for it or something. Um, so the seventh one I have in this list is uh, activism, um, hashtag activism, um, the activists tapping into social media. I mean, you're seeing this now out of Paris, right, out of France. Um, and I don't know if you saw that Anonymous has, has claimed that they're now going with the extremists. Yeah. Probably the most worrisome thing the extremists have heard yet. So social visual communication is going to continue to get uh, prominence. Uh, the idea being that you can flip through a lot of images very quickly uh, in the time it would take you to read one, you know, 800-word article. Uh, that's what people are doing on their phones when they have a spare moment is, is flipping through stuff, not choosing an article and standing there and reading it. Um, there's a, a, a new tool out there I've been playing with called Plague. Um, I think it's uh, developed out of Israel, um, but they're trying to democratize what goes viral uh, rather than have it be influencers who share it and that makes it take off. Um, it takes off merely because the content merits the attention. And the way it works is I share something and it goes to five other members of the network who are geographically close to me. If they swipe it up, they're sharing it with five more people. If they swipe it down, they think it's not interesting enough to share. You can go into each one of these things that you have shared and see how what percentage of people have gone on and shared it again. Uh, and there's a heat map that shows how it is spread across the globe. Um, and it's fascinating. And I, you know, whether plague takes off or not, I don't know. I can't say. Uh, I think the concept is going to take root, that you don't need to reach out to influencers. There are mechanisms that allow things to you know, get attention because they merit the attention. So, you know. uh, brand ambassadors, and here I'm speaking specifically of internal brand ambassadors. Uh, and I think this is what I talked about, isn't it, when I came out to, uh, is, is your employees um, are no longer people to be recruited. They're going to be talking about your organization on Glassdoor uh, with their friends and their communities. Uh, here in the U.S., the, um, uh, the federal, uh, the, the, the Labor Department, uh, the U.S. government has found against a number of companies that had policies that said you can't say bad things about the company online. Basically saying that's a violation of free speech. Of course they can't. You can't tell them they can't. Um, so, you know, I, Frankly, I think this is going to lead to an era where companies understand to a much greater degree than they do now that it's in their 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 own enlightened self-interest to have engaged, happy, satisfied employees. Uh, it's not going to be something they do, you know, um, that's extra. They understand that it's at the core uh, of what they, especially now that we have consumers uh, reporting in huge numbers in surveys that they want to do business with companies whose values align with their own. Uh, they want to do business with companies that are genuinely engaged in the community. At, uh, at, at the um, governance level, they're, they're ethical, uh, that they are uh, stewards of the environment, that they are good corporate citizens, and that they are good employers. Uh, this is driving purchase decisions, it's driving investment decisions. Um, so what it means is eventually every employee is, is, is an ambassador for your organization and advocate on behalf of the positions that your organization is taking. Um, and uh, we're going to have to have the mechanisms and the policies and the training in, in place to make sure that you know, what they're advocating supports the goals of the organization. Uh, obviously video, I just saw numbers that said uh, there's been a 
a, like a 380% increase in the number of videos getting into a Facebook news feed. As I was going to say, the number of videos that have been shared over Facebook um, in the last year uh, in the U.S. by users now, not by brands, has increased by 90%, and I think it was about 80% worldwide. Um, obviously, there's something going on with video. So, I mean, that doesn't surprise anybody, but, uh, you know, short-form video, again, something where people will watch it and it'll be over before they decide it's not interesting, right? Um, is going to be big. Um, so uh, I don't know if you're following along with me on the article, but the 11th item is, is crowds, yeah, crowdsourcing. Uh, we're seeing more and more organizations doing this for both internal and external purposes. Um, one of the more recent ones I liked, and I think I shared this one in that talk, was Marriott uh, going out and asking employees to have pictures taken of themselves doing their jobs and then incorporating those pictures into the job postings for that job. You say, here's what it looks like when one of our happy employees is doing this. Um, I think it's brilliant, right? Um, the more we can show behind the scenes, candid, authentic, you know, give those insights into the organization, the better. But here they're reaching out to their employees and asking them to do that. We know from the Edelman Trust Barometer, an annual survey that Edelman Public Relations does, that, uh, that, that people trust internal subject matter experts and frontline employees way more than they trust CEOs uh, or paid spokespeople. So again, that's why you want your employees to be ambassadors um, and to provide the mechanisms for that and make sure that they want to, right? And that, that's, where, that's where the engagement and the job satisfaction comes in. Then social business um, is, is sort of part of the same issue that leads to the brand ambassador uh, item, but the fact is that people are starting to use social networks and collaborative software and, and other social tools as the day-to-day -day, uh, mechanisms for getting their work done. Uh, it's not for, you know, sharing pictures of the cat or, you know, what I had for lunch or anything, you know, I mean, that's still there, of course, but you know, you, you, you talk to, uh, you know, I mean, you know, talk to my daughter. She's 25 um, and she doesn't use email uh, ex except when she needs to sign up for some sort of a social account in order to get verification. Right. Um, and notifications. Uh, but everything she's doing is is by text messaging and social network uh, and chat services. Um, and you talk to employees. I mean, I remember uh, talking to the CEO of a hospital um, and uh, he was being pushed by his IT department to shut down access to Facebook. And he said, that's how half our employees get in touch with me. And they also share information and, and seek information from each other on Facebook. He said, crazy to shut that down. You know, you get up to about 30 years of age and under and they're not using email. This is how they communicate. Um, so I think organizations need to recognize that, you know, just like email was new in the early 90s, well, new to business, um, but now it's ingrained and everybody uses it. This is where social software is headed. Uh, and organizations are going to have to sort of take control of the culture of messaging in the organization to make sure that people are using this to grow value in the organization rather than, oh, you know, this is my preferred tool for collaboration and therefore I'm going to use this. Um, I, I refer to this as the, the Godspeed approach, right, where IT throws out a new messaging technology and says, here it is, everybody, Godspeed. It kind of leaves it to your own devices to figure out, and which is what they did with email, frankly, you know, which is why different people use it different ways. And some people create lists, and there's no central archive of lists, and and some people will do a million CCs, and some people will reply all, and you know, it's 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 because it's it's a tool where you're left to your own devices. So I think we're going to have more uh, personalized. We're going to more personalized communication. That's the thirteenth item, right? Just the fact that we're going to find ways to uh, get to narrower and narrower niches, uh, right down to the individual. Um, in order to make these communications more relevant to people. Right. Uh, so what did I have next? Um, 
Yeah, blogging and podcasting. Uh, obviously, podcasting is surging right now. A lot of that is thanks to one podcast. I don't know how much you guys have heard of it over there, but it's called Serial. Uh, has millions of listeners and and has led to you know blogs and and discussions and and uh, even brands have tried to jump on this. But blogging's on the rise too, oddly enough, for something that people said were, was was dead um, not that long ago. Yeah, and I think particularly for businesses as a way to uh, share information that we know our audiences are interested in. Um, but then finally, this this notion of the indie web. Uh, this you know, um, uh, Tim Berners Lee has called for the re decentralization of the web. Uh, out of the uh, concern that everything has sort of been consolidated on Facebook and, and Twitter, uh, that we need to get back to publishing our own stuff on our own sites. Um, there's this concept called Posse, uh, publish on your own site, syndicate everywhere. Uh, there are uh, There's an indie web movement. Uh, there's um, There are indie web tools emerging. Um, the one I, I use is uh, called, um, and uh, I'm going to blank out on it right here. Um, it, there's a site where basically you own all the content on it. You can export it. Uh, you can install this on your own site if you want to. Um, but uh, the, the known, it's, it's called known, K N O W N. Um, and if uh, on the web, it's withknown.com. W I T H K N O W N. Set up, set this up, and basically you publish there, and then indicate whether you want that to get posted to Twitter. You want to get posted to your Facebook account. Um, do you want it to get posted to Flickr uh, if it's a photo? You know, and they'll be expanding the the, the tools, you know, through APIs uh, where you can share the content that you've published on your own site. So I think we're going to see um, a rise in this. And and the interesting thing about known, from my point of view, is is that they're pl planning. And uh, monetizing this partly by uh, making it available for the enterprise. Uh, 